Hello everyone and welcome to my new lesson video. In this lesson video, I will be discussing the different gas laws, the Boyle's law, the Charles law, and the Amonton's law. So join me for the next few minutes and learn everything about gas laws. I am your teacher, Sir Mark Laroya. The three gas laws that I will be discussing are the following. The first one is the Boyle's law wherein we will discuss the relationship of the volume and pressure of the gas when temperature is constant. The second one is the Charles law wherein we're going to show the effect of temperature on the volume of the gas given that the pressure is constant. And the Amonton's law or the gay lushaks law wherein we will show the relationship between pressure and temperature when the volume is constant. The first gas law that I will discuss will be the Boyle's law. This law shows the relationship of pressure and volume given that the temperature is constant. At constant temperature, the volume of the gas is inversely proportional to the pressure of the gas, meaning as the pressure increases, the volume of the gas decreases. Given that the temperature is constant, we will now have the relationship between pressure and volume given the equation P1 V1 equals P2 V2, where P1 is the initial pressure of the gas, P2 will be our final pressure of the gas, V1 is the initial volume of the gas, and V2 will be the final volume of the gas. In this equation, it shows that the product of the initial pressure and initial volume should be the same or equal to the product of our final pressure and final volume. So let us now solve a problem involving Boyle's law. At constant temperature, a gas was compressed from 5 liters to 4 liters at a final pressure of 1.05 atmosphere. What was the initial pressure of the gas? So let us first enumerate the given. We have the initial volume of the gas is 5 liters and it was compressed into 4 liters that is the final volume of the gas. If the final pressure is or the final pressure of the gas is 1.05 atmosphere since we notice that the volume decreased that means the pressure increased so that means our final pressure 1.05 atmosphere should be greater than the value for our initial pressure coming from the formula p1 v1 equals p2 v2 we can derive the formula for our initial pressure and that will be P1 is equal to P2 V2 all over V1. So all we have to do is to simply substitute the values of the final pressure times final volume all over initial volume. So P1 now will be equal to 1.05 atmosphere times 4 liters all over 5 liters. The unit of liters of our volume will be cancelled out, leaving us with the unit atmosphere for our pressure. And so, P1 now will be P1 is equal to 0 0.84 atmosphere. So we see here that our P1 is less than our P2, which means the pressure increased. That is why the volume of the gas decreased. Another problem under Boyle's law. A gas was pressurized by 20% initially at 0.9 atmosphere. If the initial volume of the gas was 8 liters, what will be the final volume of the gas? So initially, the pressure of the gas is 0.9 atmosphere. Based on the problem, the pressure was increased by 20% 
so we can multiply our initial pressure by 1.2 to get the final pressure and that will be 1.08 atmosphere. Initially, the volume of the gas was 8 liters. Since our pressure from P1 to P2 increased, that means under Boyle's law, our volume should decrease. And so, we should expect that our V2 or the final volume should be less than the volume initially. So, it should be less than 8 liters. From the formula of our Boyle's law, P1 V1 equals P2 V2, we can derive for the formula of our final volume that will be V2 is equal to P1 V1 all over P2. So all you have to do is to simply substitute all the values in our formula. V2 now will be equal to 0.9 atmosphere times 8 liters all over 1.08 atmosphere. Here in our formula, we can see that we can cancel out the unit atmosphere, leaving us with the unit of liters for our volume. And so, our final volume should be less than 8 liters. So, our final volume now will be equal to 6.67 liters. So, we see that our final volume is less than our initial volume since the pressure from P1 to P2 increase. Another gas law is the Charles Law. Charles Law was named after the French physicist Jacques Charles in the 18th century wherein he formulated the effect of temperature on the volume of the gas. It states that at constant pressure, the volume of the gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature, meaning as the temperature increases, the volume of the gas also increases. Charles' law may be expressed in this formula. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2, where T1 is the initial absolute temperature of the gas, T2 is the final absolute temperature of the gas, V1 is the initial volume of the gas, and V2 is the final volume of the gas. Let us now solve a problem involving Charles' law. At constant pressure, a gas was heated from 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, and the final volume of the gas was 50 liters. What was the initial volume of the gas? So initially, the temperature of the gas is 20 degrees Celsius and it went up up to 30 degrees Celsius. So that means our temperature increased. The final volume is 50 liters. So, based on Charles' law, if our temperature increased, we should expect that the volume of the gas also increased. That means, our final volume, 50 liters, should be greater than the value of our initial volume. Or should we say, the value of our initial volume should be less than the value of our V2, 50 liters. So the formula for our Charles Law is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So using this or coming from this formula, we can derive the formula for our initial volume and that will be V1 equals T1 V2 all over T2. First, before we use this formula in finding the initial volume of the gas, we should first convert our temperature in terms of absolute temperature. For T1, to convert this into absolute temperature, from 20 degrees, we add 273.15, so we will now have 293.15, and the unit now will be Kelvin. So this is the equivalent absolute temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, our initial temperature. For our T2, same procedure, we add 273.15 from 30, and so we will get 303.15 Kelvin as the absolute temperature of our 
final temperature. After this, we can now use the formula to solve for our initial volume. And again, we should have a value less than 50 liters. So V1 now will be 293.15 Kelvin multiplied by 50 liters all over 303.15 Kelvin. So as we can see, we can cancel out the unit of K, the Kelvin, the absolute temperature, leaving us with the unit of liters, which is the unit of volume. And so our V1 now is equal to 48.35 liters, which is less than our final volume, which satisfies the Charles law wherein as the temperature increases, the volume also increases. That means from 48.35 liters, the volume increased up to 50 liters. Another problem under Charles' law, at constant pressure, a gas was cooled down with volume from 50 liters at 80 degrees Celsius to 45 liters. What is the final temperature of the gas? So our given, the initial temperature of the gas is 80 degrees Celsius. It is said that the gas was cooled down, therefore, we should expect that the final temperature should be less than 80 degrees. Our initial volume is 50 liters and the volume is 45 liters. Based on Charles' law, if we decrease our temperature, the volume also decreases. So from the formula V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, we can now solve for our T2 from the formula T2 equals T1 V2 over V1. But first, before we use our initial temperature to our formula, let us first convert our 80 degrees Celsius into absolute temperature. So the absolute temperature for initial temperature will be 80 plus 273.15. That will give us 353.15 Kelvin. So we can now plug in this value to our formula in solving the final temperature. And T2 now, our final temperature will be 353.15 Kelvin multiplied by the final volume 45 liters all over the initial volume 50 liters. The unit of liters will be cancelled out leaving us with K which is the unit of absolute temperature. So the absolute final temperature will be 317.84 Kelvin. This is the final temperature of the gas, which is less than our which is less than our initial temperature that satisfy our Charles law that if our temperature decreases, the volume also decreases. But we can also convert our temperature going back to degrees Celsius, that is we subtract 273.15 from 317.84, that will give us our final temperature equal to 44.69 degrees Celsius. And again, this final temperature in terms of degrees Celsius is less than our initial 80 degrees Celsius. And now we have now the Amonton Slough. Sometimes it is also known as the gay Lushak Slough. This gas law states that, at constant volume, the pressure of the gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas. Meaning, as the temperature increases, the pressure of the gas also increases. The relationship between pressure and temperature is shown by this formula, P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2 where T1 is the initial absolute temperature of the gas, T2 is the final absolute temperature of the gas, P1 is the initial pressure of the gas, and P2 is the final pressure of the gas. Let us now solve a problem involving the concept of Amonton's law. At constant volume, a gas was heated from 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, and the final pressure was 1.75 atmosphere. What was the initial pressure of the gas? 
the initial temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and it was heated up to 30 degrees Celsius, meaning the temperature increased. Our final pressure is 1.75 atmosphere and based on a Monton's law, temperature is directly proportional to our pressure so that means if our temperature increase, our pressure also increase which means our final pressure 1.75 atmosphere is greater than our initial pressure. So we can expect that our answer, the initial pressure of the gas, is lower than or less than 1.75 atmosphere. Coming from the formula P1 over T1 over P2 over T2, we can derive the formula for our initial pressure and this will become P1 is equal to T1 times P2 over T2. But before we solve using this formula, let us first convert our two temperature into absolute temperature. So our T1, 20 degrees Celsius, is equal to 293.15 Kelvin. And for our T2, 30 degrees Celsius, that is the same as 303.15 Kelvin. So plugging in the values of T1 and T2 as well as P2 to the formula of our initial pressure, P1 now will be equal to 293.15 Kelvin multiplied by 1.75 atmosphere divided by 303.15 Kelvin. The unit of Kelvin will be cancelled out leaving us with the unit of atmosphere. And our initial pressure now will be equal to 1.69 atmosphere, which is less than our final pressure 1.75 atmosphere. That satisfies the Amontan's law that as the temperature increases, the pressure also increases. And for our last problem, at constant volume, a gas was heated with pressure from 1.2 atmosphere at 80 degrees Celsius to 1.5 atmosphere. What was the final temperature of the gas? Our initial temperature is 80 degrees Celsius. Our initial pressure is 1.2 atmosphere and the pressure increased up to 1.5 atmosphere. Based on Amontan's law, as the pressure increases, temperature also increases. That means we should expect that our final temperature is greater than 80 degrees Celsius. From the formula P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, we can derive our initial or final temperature as T2 is equal to T1 times P2 over P1. But first, before we solve this using this formula, let us first convert our initial temperature into absolute temperature. So, T1, 80 degrees Celsius, plus 273.15, this will give us an absolute temperature equal to 353.15 Kelvin. So, plugging in the value of our absolute temperature to the formula, T2 now will be equal to 353.15 Kelvin multiplied by the final pressure of 1.5 atmosphere all over the initial pressure of 1.2 atmosphere. And the unit of atmosphere will be cancelled out leaving us with the unit of Kelvin. So the absolute final temperature of our gas will be 441.44 Kelvin which is greater than the absolute initial temperature of our gas. So we can also convert this going back to degrees Celsius, 441.44 minus 273.15. The final temperature in terms of degrees Celsius will be 168.29 degrees Celsius. So it shows that our temperature also increase as the pressure increase. So thank you very much for watching this lesson video. I hope you learned something new in chemistry, particularly about the different gas laws. Please don't forget to like and share this video to your friends and classmates and subscribe to my channel, Sir Mark Laroya. See you again next time and God bless.